Good, good morning, good morning. He is an on-time God. Yes, He is. i like to welcome everyone on Facebook Live and those on Trinity Baptist Prayer Line. He is an on-time God. And we want to thank you for joining the service today and pray that you receive a blessing. Um, my son Joshua is going to come up and read our opening scripture and we will get started. Today's reading will be coming from Colossians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. With all praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, in which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer everything. Thank you, son. Wow. Redeeming the time. That is our title for today. I don't know about you, but we need to redeem the time that we end. Before we get started, let's go ahead and open up with the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, is once again that we come and we thank you for this privilege and opportunity to hear from you today. My prayer is that I decrease and you increase. I pray they not see the messenger, but they see the message. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we read these scriptures from Colossians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6, we see that God is telling us that we need to redeem our time. Wow! Whenever we think about redeeming something, we're taking advantage of that opportunity. Jesus has given us life and he has given us a certain amount of time that he has allotted each and every one of us that he tells us to redeem the time have you ever um, been given an opportunity where someone say hey you have this amount of time to do something but then you never did it you have wasted your time you got busy and you didn't focus on redeeming that opportunity. Well, God doesn't want you to feel like that. He wants you to redeem that time that you have left. And I love this scripture here. And we want to break it down. It's only four scriptures, verses here. And we want to take a look at Let's look at verse 3. It says, with all praying for us. That God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Wow. Well, the first thing I want you to know that they were asking for prayer. It says, pray for us that we that God will open a door of utterance. I'm telling you that whenever you pray for an opportunity to witness for Christ, He will give you that opportunity. And we need to be ready to go into that opportunity so that we can proclaim the name of Jesus. So I'm telling you, everything that we do should be bathed with prayer because it prepares us for the task that's ahead. It says to speak the mysteries of Christ. What is the mysteries of Christ? Is that one have died for our sins and he rose again the third day for our sins and then we can come to him and be saved. The mysteries of Christ. It's not keeping the law. Matter of fact, we can't keep the law. Matter of fact, our, the law is our schoolmaster. So the mystery is that now we can receive salvation simply by believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ. And I love this because it goes on to say for which I am also in bonds. Are you in bonds for witnessing for Christ? I like the way the scripture says it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. I love this verse. Because it's not me, it's Christ. 
2 Corinthians 5.14 says this, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. I want to ask you the question, what is constraining you? Is it constraining you from telling people about Jesus or is it constraining you to tell people about Christ well I can tell you the love of Christ constraineth me what is constraining you to tell people about the mystery of Jesus Christ and then he goes on to say in verse 4 let's take a look at verse 4 it says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. I'm telling you, I love the King James Bible. Anybody know me? No, I do. I love that word ought because that word ought means should. This is what we should do. We should make him manifest. What does that word manifest mean? It means to show openly, to make known. You know, I told you before, our main task is to know him and make him known. Are you making Jesus manifest? Well, I can tell you, if you're not, he's not in you. Because the Bible tells us that it, Christ is in us, reconciling the world unto himself. It is not us. See, I want you to get it. If you're not doing it, he's not in you. Because it's him in you doing the work. I mean, the things that I do, I can't do it. It's Christ in me. The hope of glory. So what he is doing, we need to make him manifest as we all. That means we should do it. There's no doubt that we should do it. We should be a witness. You know, he says we're witnesses. If you're not a witness, that means you haven't seen it taking place. Many of us are not witnesses because we have not seen the new birth in our life. So if you're not a witness, that could tell you a lot of stories right there. Because only a witness will testify. Are you testifying of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? That's the question. And then we're getting to the, to the meat of the message today. And we'll take some time here. Um, verse 5. It says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time well he tells us that we need to walk in wisdom because the, during these times people will not be wise they will be worldly they will have worldly knowledge but they won't have spiritual knowledge God tells us here that we need to walk in wisdom towards them that are without there are so many folks walking around with no wisdom of the word of God and God tells us as children of God that we need to be aware of that and when we're around these people speak wisdom so be careful what you're saying what is your manner of conversation when you're around these people are you um, saying things that they're saying or are you um, joining in the things that they're doing God wants you to walk in wisdom. Why? Because the time is short. He said we got to redeem the time. I love it. God has given all of us time. Now let's talk about time for a second because it's an awesome thing. I want you to understand that time is temporary. God is eternal. Time has no effect on him. The good news is that God stepped into time in the body of the flesh of Jesus Christ to deliver us out of time. Woo, man, I'm telling you, that's good. I love that one. He stepped in time to deliver us out of time. But let me tell you, time is running out. So what God's saying, hey, I have given you this time. What? Have you done with it? We can't compare ourselves with other people. Some people live longer. Some people live shorter. But the time that he gave you, you will be accountable for that time that he gave you. And the question will be, what have you done with Jesus? 
during that time. So he tells us to be wise. Now there's some, I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures here um, that tells us to redeem the time and to be wise. I want you to look at um, Psalms chapter 90 verse 12. While you look that up, I'll get a swig of water here. Psalms 90 verse 12. It reads this way, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Folks, I tell you, we're, we, we must understand that our days are numbered. We will die. But what we do with the time that we have here is what's going to matter. So what we need to do is know that, hey, we're going to die and we need to prepare and live our life with wisdom. Sad to say, a lot of us aren't prepared to die. There's an adage that I heard before, and it's so true. You are not prepared to live until you are prepared to die. And this scripture here lets us know that we got to understand that we are going to leave this place one day, either by death or Jesus Christ calling us up hither to be with him. But we need to apply our hearts unto wisdom. I want to encourage you here, if you're hearing this message, that means you're alive. And you have time. God has you here for a reason. And you can take advantage of your time. Boy, I thank God for that. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. It says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Here we go. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Man, wow. We need to walk with wisdom because. And not as fools. I'm telling you, it is a sad thing to see a child of God walking around like a fool. And when I say that, that means you are not trusting in what God has said. And I want to, you know, don't walk around as fools. We are not going to be caught up with this hoopla and this all this crazy news that's coming up. We believe the report of God. It says that we must be wise and not as fools. Christians, I want you to hear me well. If you believe the Bible, you understand that things have to get worse. If you believe the Bible, you must understand that the world system will fail. If you believe the Bible, you must trust that Jesus Christ will take care of you in the midst of what you're going through. We have so many stories in the Bible where he has protected us in the midst of trouble. You know, Psalm 23 tells us, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death... I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We are going to have to walk through to get to. But we want to escape it and get around it. You know, I love, I love my brothers and sisters, but they are still thinking that the world system will bring them peace. Please, I beg of you to understand that God's word is fulfilling right before our eyes and there will be no peace outside of Jesus. So if we believe God's word, we must embrace for what's ahead. And I love this message, redeeming the time, as this scripture said in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16, because the days are evil. But I don't know about you, I'm encouraged. I'm excited because he told us that these things would be. We are so hunkered down in this world, and this world is not our home. I like what Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says it. I hope you get it. It says, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Whenever we focus on God, the kingdom of God, 
he adds these th- and, and his righteousness. Let's keep going on there. When we focus, when we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, all these things shall be added to us. He will take care of us. But I want you to understand that that verse is talking about priorities. Whenever you have your priorities in order, then you can have peace in the midst of a storm. What's most important is just like when you go to an emergency room and they're always assessing what's the most important need at the time. Well, you go in there with a little um, ache on your knee and then somebody come in there got shot. Who do you think they're going to take first? It's about priority. What about what are the priorities in your life? The things that you're doing. But you, you, we, we say God's word is important to me, but we don't spend time reading it. You know, I talk to many people, I say, hey, do you read God's word every day? Um, not every day, I read it sometimes. What are you talking about? God's word is food for our spirit. And I'm telling you, whatever you feed the most is flesh that eats two or three times a day, or the spirit that you starve them and re- feed them probably every other day sometimes. I'm telling you, you need to get in God's word. Set your priority on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you will see him do great things. Because it's about priorities. Why are priorities so important? Satan's biggest ploy is to distract you. Is to deceive you. These are the things that he used to make us waste our time. I like what the scripture says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. It says, Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, I tell you, we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. I just simply told you what he tries to do. He tries to deceive you, and then if he can't deceive you, he will distract you. And man, I'm telling you, I see so many Christian folks distracted. I mean, even when I attend the house of God, I see them on their cell phones. I see them looking out the window. I see them walking here and walking there. So distracted and not looking for Christ. You know, even when we're outside, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day. If we simply look up into heaven and see the glory of God. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. But we're so busy with our heads down and distracted and not seeing the beauty of the Lord. I want you to think for a second. When you see people on their cell phones, what are they doing? Their heads down. And they're distracted. Me and my son was um, driving somewhere the other day. He said, Dad, look at there, look at there. It was an old lady on the phone, on the highway, going 70 miles per hour with her head down looking at a cell phone. I don't know about you, but that's a scary sight. But we're distracted. There's so many accidents happening because they're distracted. And whenever you're distracted, it leads to death. I'm telling you, Christian friends, is that you need to not be ignorant of Satan's devices. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5 that three ways that Satan tries to attack you. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices devices. So we're talking about priorities here. There's one other scripture and I want to get to here is Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 12. Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 12 and we're almost done. And that knowing, oh man, here we go. I mean, we should know. And that knowing the time that now is high time, listen to this, to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, 
The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Good Lord Almighty, what a verse, so powerful. It tells us that we should know the time. Why should we know the time? He told us the time. So if we are in God's Word, we know the time that it's high time and our salvation is nearer than when we believe. Yeah, we've been talking about Christ is coming, Christ is coming. But now it's closer than when we have believed. And I like what it says. We need to awake out of sleep. I'm telling you, Christian friends, a lot of us are still asleep. We are still asleep to the deceptions of this world. We are still asleep and not believing the full counsel of God. He tells us to awake. I'm telling you, so many of us are asleep. But when God wakes us up, we need to stay woke up. Because why? Our salvation is near. You know, there's a scripture that talks about Jesus Christ coming as a thief in the night. We love to quote that. But if you keep reading that, it comes as a thief for the night for those that are not ready. But if we are ready, we will um, not be caught as a thief in the night. Because Christ told us about the time that he would come. Not the exact time. We don't know the exact time. But we do know the season. And I can tell you, I believe that we are in that season. But what he tells us, verse 12, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. What works of darkness are a child of God is doing? He says, cast off the works of darkness. It is a sad day when you call yourself a Christian and you are working the works of darkness. He says, awake and cast these things off because the time is short. Now, let's look at verse 6 back in Colossians chapter 4. This is our last verse and we're coming home. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 says this. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Wow. We must tell people the truth. We can't give them a half-truth. A half-truth presented as the whole truth is an untruth. You need to give the whole counsel of God. Yes, we need to preach the love of God, the love of Jesus, but you also need to preach about the wrath of God. It'll be a difference when you preach the whole counsel of God. Now, he says... Let your speech be with grace. You don't want to beat people on the head with a hammer. I've seen some of these Christian groups just beating people on the head, saying all these bad things. But God says, let your speech be with grace. Nobody wants to come down with the hammer. God's word is tough enough. It'll work on your heart. It'll do enough. It'll do enough job on you. You don't have to put the hammer on them. What is grace? Here's what grace is. You probably heard it, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. You need to let them know that we have the grace of God by Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ died for our sins and that he rose on that third day. And when he was on that cross, God pulled out the wrath of God upon Jesus, which nobody else could take. And he took that and he died. And on that third day... He rose from the grave. So God wants us to speak with grace. And then season with salt. That's the truth. Keep it real. Don't play with people. You know, so many times we are not telling people what God wants us to tell them because we're afraid of hurting their feeling. Folks, if they die without Christ, trust me, that's far worse than hurting your feeling. God wants us to tell the truth, seasoned with salt. And I like what it says here, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Do you know how to answer every man? Are you prepared to present the gospel of Christ to someone? 
You know, it's a sad day when a Christian cannot witness to another person. Remember, I told you, if you witness, that means you have saw something take place. So when you tell me you can't witness, you haven't seen it. You haven't seen the change in you. Because a witness simply talks about what he has seen. So God wants us to be ready to give an answer. Now, as we close here, he tells us that we, we need to be wise. Redeem the time that we can be wise. How do you know that you're being wise? One of my favorite scripture is Proverbs 11.30. And we're almost done. It says, Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Wow, why is that one wise? Because he is redeeming the time. And he's using his time wisely to do what Christ did. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Well, this person has their priorities straight. They're not ripping and running and doing all of these things that mount to nothing. They are... What they said, he that winneth souls is wise. And there's a lot to go in there. There's preparation, body preparation, mental, spiritual preparation. Because whenever you're going out talking to someone about Christ, you need to make sure that you are right in God's eyes. Now, as we're getting ready to close, we need to be wise enough to set the priorities by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I want you to look at your activities and see what priorities you have. We have so much time on our hands now with this um, pandemic. What are you doing with your time? It'll tell you. Are you just resting, sitting around, don't care about nobody? Are you studying about end time prophecies? Are you preparing? There's a lot of things that we can be doing. I'm probably busier now than ever, but my priority is not work. My priorities is not these extracurricular activities. My priorities is getting ready to see my Savior. One day he's going to come and call us up hither. That's my priority. So I leave you with these two scriptures and we're out of here. I want you to look at Haggai chapter 1 verse 7. Write that down. You might have some trouble finding it. Haggai chapter 1 verse 7. It reads this way. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Wow, what a message he's telling us. And I'm telling you when I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. We need to consider our ways. What are we doing with Jesus? Your time is running out. And our last scripture here is Matthew chapter 26, verse 75. I'll leave you with that and then we'll close. Matthew chapter 26, verse 75. Oh God, this is good. We remember this. And Peter remembered. Oh Lord, that's good. Do you remember the word of Jesus? And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Wow, that, word, that just hits me so tight. Because whenever we remembered the words of Jesus... Do we believe that? Peter at this time said, Father, Jesus, I'll follow you to the end of the earth. I'll follow you. I'll do what you say. I'll die for you. But when the time came, when the time came for the rubber to meet the road, Peter could not cash in. He went, he lied, said, I didn't know Jesus. I don't know the man. And I'll just ask yourself the question, by your actions, are you saying the same thing? But Jesus says that cock going to crew. There was a time frame there. I want you to understand. The time frame when that cock crew. And Peter had denied him thrice. Three times. And then he remembered. What Jesus said. And he went out. And he wept bitterly. Do you 
remember what Jesus said. He's coming back. And we need to make sure that whatever we have done is pleases Him. You need to look at your life and say, Hey, have I done what Jesus told me? And then I hope you respond as Peter did. He wept bitterly because he knew he had wasted the opportunity. Peter had to understand that he had to be willing to die for Christ. Are you there? I told you, you will not live for Christ until you are prepared to die for Christ. And Peter finally got that message. And we find out that he later does die for Christ. We need to get there. I want to end with this. You need to redeem your time. What have you done with Jesus? Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. He has given us a present today. I pray that you take this time and do what Christ says. For those of you that have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you heard this message, you have time. I want to pray for you right now to let you know that you can receive Jesus Christ and you can start taking advantage of, his t- of your time. So if you would bow your heads and you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you believe that you've sinned and there's no way that you can um, please the Father but by accepting the Son, you can simply go before Him and ask Him into your heart. Say a simple prayer such as this. Bow your heads. Father, I come now confessing I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose again for in payment for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you've done that, please drop us a line. We'll love to send you some information to help you grow in Christ. We pray that you have a nice day and be blessed and redeem the time. God bless.